embrace the possibilities. Let's make the future for a 360 film. I think we should do our cities and buildings differently. This is my message. Think. Development for me means increase in complexity. It's a simple addition for a designer, but it saves a lot of time in practice. Why is the residence not so clever? So this could be interesting for you as well. Project, which is about making architecture from seawater. And I would like to start with a bit of a background on how this project started. I worked as an architect in, uh, in China for, for a while. Uh, in China, I was working with uh, a company that did urban planning, so I was really on, on, uh, on the edge of the city, on, on the clash basically between landscape and city and tradition and modernity. It was a shock to me. I saw incredible waste, incredible superficiality in the way we do things. And I, uh, I was looking for a way to do things differently and I find inspiration in, in nature because I believe a lot of the problems we currently face have been solved by nature. Especially when you look at materials, when you look at production process, when you look at uh, uh, connectivity, when you look at complexity. So for example, uh, I, th yeah, I think we can learn from these sort of biomimetic strategies that you find in, in production of materials. In, and I think we should do our cities and buildings differently. And uh, a lady called Janine Benyus has written a book about this phenomenon called biomimicry and she basically says the way we should design our cities, the way we should design products or whatever, we should design them as organisms as a part of a bigger ecosystem. So we should look at, uh, we should use waste as a resource, we should uh, optimize them, we should uh, uh, use only local materials. And, and this strategy is, is really fascinating to me and I wanted to use it to combat desertification, which is the biggest problem of the planet at this point. Uh, every year an area three times the size of Holland is uh, agri agricultural land is swallowed by uh, deserts. Um, so it's, it's a gigantic problem affecting one and a half billion people. And when you look at deserts or dry areas on, on a world map I noticed three things. Uh, first of all there's a lot of energy, free energy available in the form of solar energy. Secondly there's a lot of cheap land, unused free land basically, and uh, a lot of deserts are surprisingly close to, to the ocean, to seawater, and, and we can do things with that. So simple examples are desalination and uh, those seawater greenhouses that use seawater to, to grow crops, but they're not circular. They always have salt as a waste product. So what if we uh, attempt to close this circle and use the salt as an architect to make architecture? What if we build uh, uh, cities from this sort of limitless uh, uh, seawater resource? And for this, I developed a, a salt-based building material. I have one in my pocket. It's a salt uh, brick using over 90% salt and a small bit of starch, a sort of a polymer to bind the salt together. You can bake it by temperatures around 90 degrees centigrade, super uh, low energy, plenty of free energy uh, available. So it's, it's basically a, a biocomposite of, of salt and a waste material, and I, I tested this material. It's fairly strong uh, at, at even this sort of simple level. This I just made in my kitchen. It's pretty low tech. Um, so I made these testing sticks and I tested it on compressive strength and tensile strength. And it turns out that it's comparable to several existing building materials. At its current strength, you, can, you are able to build two-story buildings, comparable to masonry, ramped earth, even ice. And with salt, because it's little cubes, basically tied together. It also deals well with uh, compression, so it's good to make domes and arches and sort of uh, uh, computer-generated catenary structures. And integrated in a desert environment, I believe it could look like this, sort of a desert city. So the idea is to pump up seawater in, uh, in desert areas, uh, and a part of the seawater goes to an algae facility where you grow starch. A part of the, the algae is starch, around 40%, it all works on solar power of course, and then around 60% of the algae is biomass that you can use to feed a herd of goats or cattle or whatever animal you like. And uh, another part of the seawater goes to these seawater greenhouses, as you can see here, in which you grow crops and the waste or the, the, the output of these greenhouses is prime. These greenhouses have been commercialized already in, in Australia. So then you uh, basically distill the brine in, in salt pans on a large scale and you're left with uh, salt. So now you have salt and starch, and uh, you can integrate the salt and the starch, you can basically uh, make that, use that to make a building material. 
to make this the salt city. And then the waste of the city can be uh, basically the, 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 the poop and the pee. You can use the fertilized desert ground. So this is what it could look like. So you see the, the sort of the, the arches and the domes and the, the, the computer generated pressure based structures and the sort of typical salt architecture that you make with this material. So in the next here you see uh, sort of test an example of uh, an actual salt structure. It's right now it's just a model. The idea is to uh, uh, right now develop the salt based material further as a, as a next step because of course it's, it's sort of a, a big project to tackle. So the first step uh, we do right now Right now we are developing a prototype to show in Amsterdam in April. What we need to do is develop the salt material a bit further, uh, sort of refine the recipe, see how it refine the coating as well to protect it from water. And uh, basically that will be a first step to this seawater-based city, that basically a city from a limitless resource that has a positive uh, effect on the local ecosystem. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.